I remember when I was in fifth grade, I was in downtown Pensacola with my dad, Jim, and it started pouring. So dad walks in to Circle K to buy an umbrella. And when the clerk told him that it was going to be $9.99, bear in mind, this is 1992 money. My dad said, I need another $10 umbrella like I need a f***ing hole in my head. Still remember the first time I heard that. Anyways, my sick-ass hypercolor shirt and my L.A. looks, gelled hair, got soaked as we walked back to the car in a summer rainstorm. Many of you feel like Jim right now, I bet. You need another five or $600 polymer frame striker fired handgun like you need a f hole in your head. Now, I'd say that a lot of YouTube commenters out there could probably do well to have a hole in their head because it might help ventilate the massive cavity that you have in your skull. But I'm not going to tell you that you need another plastic pistol. After all, you guys know what my choice is. And if perfection is too intimidating for you, you already have a bunch of other really good polymer frame handgun choices. The Beretta APX A1, the Walther PDP, the outstanding Smith & Wesson M&P series, or the CZ P10. Today, Springfield is non-consensually forcing another polymer pistol choice on you, whether you like it or not. This is the new Springfield Echelon. Before we get into it, here's my usual disclaimer. Today's the end of the press embargo, meaning there's going to be a bunch of videos out there about this gun. That doesn't automatically make everyone a shill. Some of them are, but not all of them. It just means that we weren't allowed to publish any material about this gun until today. I don't know how many people, reviewers out there, had copies of this gun or how many of them were actually paid to review it, but there's going to be a lot of content out there about the Echelon today, just how the industry works, but you're watching the best video about it. Side note, not necessarily a bad thing to have a lot of reviews. There are honest gun tubers out there, and in the past I've received guns that have worked fine, while other reviewers that I trust have received guns that didn't work so well, and vice versa. Therefore, if you've got more reviews out there, then you've got a greater sample size and probably a more reliable determination of how a new pistol like the Echelon is going to be, assuming you trust the sources. The Springfield XD came out over 20 years ago. While it initially had a very positive reception as one of the only Glock alternatives at the time, it seemed like it hasn't remained as competitive with old or new challengers, so it looks like Springfield might be moving in a different direction towards this as their flagship polymer pistol, the Echelon. If you're already tired of this video, you want a summary, I would say the Echelon is a really, really good modular chassis, big brother version of the Hellcat with the rub that it will accept over 30 different types of optics out of the box without a plate. Let's get started. The version I have here is a full size 17 plus one flush fit nine millimeter, which also features an extended optional 20 plus one round magazine. Like I said, it uses a modular chassis like the SIG P320. They call this chassis the COG or Central Operating Group, and it's manufactured from stainless steel. You can buy one echelon from the gun store, get a background check, whatever, remove the serialized chassis from this gun, and buy as many frames as you want from the internet without a background check on those frames. The COG itself is the controlled serialized part. You can move it from frame to frame to frame without having to buy a new gun. At launch, only the full-size frames will be available, but as you can imagine, there are more frames on the roadmap, but we'll talk about that in just a second. Durability and reliability were critical to Springfield. As you might imagine, HS Product was heavily involved in the design of this pistol. HS Product is, of course, the Croatian company behind the XD. They're the manufacturer of the VHS, aka the Springfield Hellion, which is, in my opinion, one of the best bullpup rifles that you can get today. HS Product is a legit military manufacturer. They know what they're doing, so it's good to hear that they were involved with developing the Echelon. According to Springfield, one of the first prototypes of this gun reliably ran 10,000 rounds without any parts breakages. And when I first heard about this gun, that same copy was well on its way to 20,000 rounds without any issues. If you remember, the Hellcat underwent a similar style of torture test before it was released to the public. And to my admittedly limited knowledge about the Hellcat, I don't think I've ever heard anyone complain about the reliability of the gun. Relative to the Hellcat, and as I mentioned earlier, this gun feels like a big Hellcat, and that's... I think a good thing. The ergonomics are outstanding on this pistol, rivaling the Walther PDP, which also might be one of the best ergonomically designed handguns in this class. Additionally, you're going to have a whopping nine different frame configurations available at launch for the full size. 
The full size version is going to be released with a small, medium, and large frame, which can each accommodate interchangeable small, medium, and large back straps. You've got a lot of configurations out there, so it doesn't matter whether you're a Samwise or a Treebeard, you should be able to find a grip that you're going to like. The grip texture feels great. The grip's extremely comfortable. It has an oversized trigger guard with a cozy undercut. Towards the top mid frame, you've got gas pedals on both sides to give your support thumb some purchase. It's got an Ambi magazine release and an Ambi slide stop, which both work very intuitively. It's got aggressive slide serrations that work very well on the front and the rear, and it's got this HK VP9 type wing on the back to make racking the slide easier. The other major feature with the Echelon is that it's going to come with a semi-universal optics mounting footprint that's user customizable to work with all of the popular red dot optic footprints on the market out there today. Over 30 of them at the time of filming will work with the Echelon, and that's without using a plate. Instead, this variable interface system, as they call it, works with these user-installed screws and studs for compatibility with respective systems. This is a perk because not only are plates kind of annoying, and also you're going to spend 50, 60, 70 bucks on one, but they're seen as an additional possible point of failure, something that could possibly break during use. Therefore, the elimination of the plate's good, assuming that this system's tough enough and idiot-proof enough. And you don't have to use an optic, of course, because at least the sights that came on my review copy of this gun are pretty good. Personally, I don't much prefer the rear U-notch with the front yellow tritium night sight, but it's still a good sighting system as borrowed from the Hellcat. And that's the standard version. You get a front night sight, which is nice. As far as standard sights go, pretty tough to beat that combo. You've also got the option of three dot tritium sights if you want, or suppressor height sights. Great options to have right out of the factory. The trigger's very good for this class of handguns in spite of having the typical striker fired trigger operation. That is a slightly crunchy take up and a break after you hit a wall with an audible and tactile reset. Feels very similar to a lot of striker fired handguns out there. My copy was a consistent four and a half to five pound trigger pull which actually felt pretty damn good. Now there are other out of the box triggers for polymer frame handguns that I like better and I've got no problem with a factory Glock trigger. However, I personally guarantee you that all of you are going to say that the Echelon has a better trigger than the most popular plastic of all time. The trigger also uses a unique two sear design to make sure that it exceeded all manner of drop testing. This is something Springfield spent a lot of time on. They didn't want any blowback coming, finding out later that this gun wasn't drop safe and they wanted it to be operator safe. Between the excellent ergonomics and the better than average trigger, we got great accuracy with the Echelon and the range without really trying all that hard. I mean, I'm not even really trying. That's one magazine, maybe like a mag and a half with just one flyer right there. But not bad, not bad. God, dude, even doing that. We went to the Neutral Ground Gun Company, the second or third best gun range in Louisiana at 212 Acock Street in Airby, Louisiana. And as you can see from these clips on the range, firing at a lively and vigorous pace. From seven yards, produced pretty tightly dispersed groups with several different types of cheap ammo. The Echelon's got a cold hammer forged barrel and it'll be released with threaded and unthreaded versions of the barrel. The barrel and slide are gonna be melanided, which is a very durable and corrosion resistant surface treatment. Yeah, it's pretty good. I feel okay about that. We could definitely do better, but I feel pretty okay about that. The full size is gonna have a 4.5 inch standard barrel or a 5.28 inch threaded barrel, again, cold hammer forged. I got two copies of this gun. We've got hundreds of rounds through both copies, running them pretty hard over two range sessions and we've had no failures of any kind. That of course, not really a big surprise, but then again, we haven't worked these guns out too hard yet. But believe you me, 
we're going to because the echelon's coming with me to a two-day pistol course at Thunder Ranch this summer, and we are going to stretch this bitch out like it's Lizzo's yoga pants. Now, while we're on stretchy pants, the echelon will not test yours. The slide is just one inch thick, and the grip's 1.2 inches thin right here, kind of the above the grip area that's going to go into your holster so it fits relatively comfortably in your waistband. At 23.9 ounces with the magazine, the full size is only 0.3 ounces heavier than a Glock 19 with magazine. Of course, the fat ass on this full size model is a beast to conceal, especially appendix. But again, you can anticipate that compact versions of this gun are going to be released in the near future. Springfield also wanted to make sure to have holster compatibility in advance, which is so, so critical today. Many manufacturers don't realize if there's no holster compatibility, ain't gonna be no wallet compatibility neither. Springfield's already sent this gun around to different holster manufacturers and big companies like Safari Land already have duty and concealed carry holsters ready to go on the market today. I used a QVO inside the waistband holster, which is probably what I would recommend if you're going to be carrying this gun. It's a really thin design, especially once you remove the wing like I did. Before we get to the negatives, let me remind you guys, TFB TV is independent. We're viewer supported, so we need you in order to keep generating content. If you like this content, if you want the chance to win one of six $250 gift certificates to Top Gun Supply, your online shooting sports superstore, or one of four $100 gift certificates to Blue Alpha Belts every single month, just pitch in five bucks or Utreon subscribe star. Not only will you get the chance to win, but you're supporting the like seventh or eighth, maybe ninth best gun tube channel. Now, let's talk about the downsides of this pistol. The first one, this gun's brand new, not based on any prior proven design. With HS product involved and with Springfield subjecting the echelon to a battery of pre-release torture testing, there's a good chance that this gun is going to be what Springfield wants us to think it is. That's not what you want. Not at all. Like I said, we're going to beat on this gun pretty thoroughly with Uncle Clint at Thunder Ranch in just about a month or so. Second... I'm leery of the universal optics mounting system. I'm not saying that I've got any reason to believe that it's not going to work. In fact, this copy has worked really well with this Trijicon RMR and hasn't lost zero. I'm just generally skeptical of universal application type designs, whether it's guns or any other type of manufacturing for that matter. It's like one size fits all kind of worries me. The RMR footprint is the de facto footprint for duty weapons. I personally would have just cut it for an RMR and called it a day, but hey, Springfield wanted to do this to set this gun apart, whatever. Finally, you're talking about a brand new design with proprietary magazines. Although we did notice that the mags from our Echelon were remarkably similar to the mags from the SIG P320. Here's the Springfield Echelon mag. Mag lock tab is right there. This is a SIG P320 mag with an extender. Interestingly, the geometry is pretty much identical, and it almost looks like it stays in there, but this base plate's getting in the way. I'm really curious if the 320 magazines would actually work if you maybe made a couple of cuts or something and didn't use the base plate, because the geometry is identical. So does it take Glock mags? No, and it doesn't take any other type of mag. Of course, the big question is, what does this gun do that other guns don't? I mean, really the only truly unique feature it has would be this kind of one size fits all mounting platform, but you get a lot of good cues. You get great ergonomics. You've got the chassis system, which is actually perhaps the safest chassis system out there as tested by Springfield. Great ergos, great controls, it runs well, it shoots well, but I can guarantee you the number one negative comment down below is going to be, so what, another polymer frame striker fired handgun, and that's fair. But over the years, I've learned that there are plenty of guns that have just broken into the space by being good at what they do. The Smith & Wesson M&P series, the CZ polymer guns, HK's polymer pistols, the Walther PDP series, the Beretta APX, they all kind of do something similar. The SIG P320 at least had the chassis system, but 
it's still a striker fired polymer frame handgun. Some of these guns did something different, others didn't do anything new at all, but they all carved out a space anyways in the market just for being good at what they do. My experience has shown me that personal preference is an underrated factor in determining market success. In other words, if people just like the gun, they're probably going to buy it. Helps if it's cheap. It's not going to be cheap, but there's a lot to like about the Daddy Hellcat. MSRP is going to be $679. I'm curious to what street price is going to be. Let's say it's like $600-ish. For an optics-ready handgun with night sights as standard, especially with all the features you get on this, I'd say that's quite reasonable. The good news is that we had no complaints whatsoever on the range. All of my negatives are theoretical. You probably want to know what I would do. You guys already know my inclination. I'm reluctant to jump on new platforms until they've kind of had some time to prove themselves. However, there are plenty of people who don't like, for example, the Glock series of pistols like I do. A lot of people don't like Glocks and they really, really don't like them. So if you present a viable alternative, which the Echelon certainly is, history seems to indicate that people will still buy it if it's good. In conclusion, yeah, this is another striker fired polymer frame handgun, which you need like another f***ing hole in the head. But as far as holes in the head go, this one in particular is a pretty good example with some unique-ish features and options. It's worth a look if you're in the market. Guys, thanks as usual for watching TFB TV. Thank you to Ventura Munitions for sending us the ammo that we use in this video. And again, if you want to win a $250 gift certificate to Top Gun Supply, six people from Patreon or Utreon win every single month. So make sure to check that out and support us. But most of all, thank you for watching and take care.